the title of the presentation is a comparison between Romy Much, Nose Band, and Neck Mount Exometer for automatic measurement of car ingestive related behaviors. I would like first to say that can you please uh, stick to the time, 15 minutes for each presenter. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I am inside the SIM. PhD student at Ghent University in Belgium. Uh, I'm working on animal tracking, especially dairy cows, with uh, sensors for monitoring and working dairy cows. So this presentation is about a comparison between two sensors, Romy Watch noseband and neck mounted accelerometer for automated measurements of ingestive related cow behaviors like drinking, eating, and ruminating. So the outline of this present presentation is as follows. I will first start with a brief introduction and the objectives of this study, and then I will present the data collection procedure and processing and the classification algorithms, and then I will discuss the results and the obtained results and sum up with the main conclusions and the future work. So first of all, why do we need to monitor, monitor ruminating and feeding behaviors? Uh, actually, these behaviors will provide relevant information about the cow uh, health and productivity and welfare. For example, we can use the change over time of these behaviors to predict calving, estrus, lameness, and other illnesses like fever or mastitis in their cows. For example, here we can see that there is a significant decrease of ruminating and feeding time around calving day, which means that we can use this information to predict the day of calving, so the, far, the farmer could assist with the cows and avoid risks of diseases and mortality in case when the calving is difficult for the cow. The same for estrus, so we can use the ruminating time to predict the day of estrus <coughs> So we can increase the effectiveness of the artificial insemination and consequently we can increase also the productivity of the, of the farm. However, measuring these behaviors in, in large sized farms, when we talk about hundreds of cows, uh, to measure these behaviors with traditional methods like direct observation or, or uh, manual analysis of video recordings, this is time consuming. This is why there is an increased demand to use electronic and biosensor devices to provide automatic tools that can measure these this behaviors. However, in, in practice, these devices have to be as small as possible to enable and to decrease the implementation costs, as, as I said, because we talk about hundreds of cows, and also we should enable large-scale deployment. So these devices have to have small batteries as much as possible with low processing and storage capabilities. Also, they would need to operate, operate for long period of time without recharge or replace of the batteries. So the monitoring system should have or use simple algorithms for the detection and also with lower sampling rates. So this would reduce the storage load and also minimize the processing and transmitting energies because we will not transmit all the raw data to the backend system, just the information about the behavior. And so consequently, we can extend considerably the battery lifetime. Of course, above all these challenges and solutions, we should uh, maintain and extend the accuracy of detection. So, therefore, the objectives of this study were to classify ruminating and feeding behaviors using neck-mounted accelerometer and also with a simple decision tree algorithm. The second objective was to compare the performance of the decision tree to Remy Watch Noseband, which is a commercial and research product that also measures ruminating and feeding behaviors. The last objective was to investigate the effect of decreasing the sampling rate on the, on the classification accuracy. 
So for that, the experiments were conducted in the Flanders Research Institute for Agriculture, Fisheries and Food, ELVO in Mela, Belgium, between March and November last year. We selected 10 cows for this study, and the cows, among other cows, were housed in crystal barn with individual cubicles, as you can see in this picture, and started for slots of concrete floor. Two sensors were, were used for the data collection. The first one is the accelerometer, which was attached to the collar of the cow. We used the activity AX3 accelerometer, which records the acceleration of the neck in 3D, uh, uh, in 3D X, Y, and Z at 10 Hz, which means 10 times each second. The second uh, sensor was the Remowatch noseband, which contains mainly two sensors. A pressure sensor around the, the neck of the uh, around the, the noise of the, of the car, and also another accelerator. <coughs> and by a combination between these two sensors, Remy Watch can classify between ruminating, feeding, and other behavior. Uh, both sensors were attached more than 24 hours before starting data collection, so the cows could be adapted with the, the sensors. As a reference for the validation, direct observations were made directly in the bar, six hours for each cow, from 9 o'clock in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. So the procedure was as follows. For each one minute, we assigned a number, zero, one, or two, to classify between, or to indicate feeding, or ruminating, or other activities. For the data processing, after getting the data from observation from the two sensors, <coughs> first one for Remy Watch, so we did not classify the raw data. The output files contain already the classification of the data at 10 Hz. However, we convert this 10 Hz data to one minute summaries uh, to be comparable with the observation. For Remy Watch, uh, for, for the accelerometer, we calculated the Victor sum based on the individual axis as follows, and then we calculated uh, the overall dynamic body acceleration, which is a parameter that isolates the dynamic component of the acceleration, which is related to the movement of the car. So by applying a low pass filter, we can get the, the dynamic component of the acceleration, which is normally reflects the, the, the neck movement of the car. And then we took the mean value for each one minute to be comparable to, to, to the observation. Here is the proposed simple decision tree algorithm. After getting the mean value for each one minute, we used two thresholds to classify between feeding, ruminating, or other activity. To build the model and to test the performances of the decision tree, we used the leave one one out cross validation. <laughs> Since we had 10 cows for the data set, uh, we used 10 cows as a training set and one cow as, as a testing set. And we repeated this uh, 10 times for all cows and then we considered the average precision, sensitivity, specificity and overall accuracy. Here is an example of the acceleration vector sum uh, obtained for each behavior, feeding, ruminating and other activity. Uh, we got higher, act, uh, higher values for, for feeding, which normally have a large movement when the cow is eating, and also for ruminating, which includes some small movements of the neck uh, from chewing and swallowing of the feed. So we have higher values than other activity, but lower values than, than, than feeding. And for the other activity, Normally it includes most of the time, resting time, when the cow is, the, the neck of the cow is not moving, so we have lower values. Consequently, the overall body dynamic uh, acceleration, the higher values were for feeding, followed by ruminating, and then other activity. So for the thresholds, we used uh, uh, point five, 0.015 for the threshold one to classify feeding, and then uh, uh, 0.031 to classify between ruminating and other activity. Here is the classification for performances for the two sensors. 
So we got comparable results for both sensors and excellent classification for ruminating and feeding behaviors. However, for other activity, it includes, uh, some, uh, it includes sometimes walking and brushing behaviors, which leads to some specific classifications. <coughs> so for the overall accuracy, we got 88% for decision tree and 89% for ruminants. In order to get a better idea of the performances of decision tree algorithm, we calculate the difference in ruminating time reported and feeding time reported by, by the observation and by the two sensors. So here we have less than two minutes per hour uh, between the, the time re in ruminating reported by observation and reported by the two sensors. And we have also less than three minutes per hour difference between the observation and the sensors. For example, if we took uh, the ruminating time, which is normally about seven to ten hours per day, so the daily error from the decision tree is uh, is about to twelve to seventeen minutes, which is lower, very low than seven to ten hours per day. And also, if we consider the daily deviation around Harvey or around Estuaries, for example, it's more than one hour, which means that the performances of the decision tree are reasonable to detect the daily changes of the, of the feeding and ruminating time. So it could be used for build a monitoring and anomaly detection system for daily data. The last step was to, do, to investigate if we could decrease the sampling rate uh, to better reduce the power consumption and the data load of the sensors. Indeed, the accuracy decreased for lower sampling rates. However, it was still over 82% when a half hertz was used, which means that we can considerably reduce the sampling rates and consequently reduce the power consumption and minimize the storage load. The last point is that we tested this decision tree in real situations and we implemented the decision tree on Librium was mod, which is a platform that enables Internet of Things applications. It is characterized by low processing and memory capabilities. Nevertheless, we were able to implement the decision tree on it. So the, after getting the acceleration, acceler, acceleration data from the accelerometer on the board, the data is processed locally and we transmit only the information about the behavior to the backend system and not all the raw data. So we, we are also installing a, a localization system in the bar so we have in real time both the location of the car and the, the corresponding behavior. To sum up, ruminating and feeding behaviors were excellently classified with a simple decision tree algorithm using Nick mounted accelerometer. We achieved uh, comparable results to Remiwatch noseband halter, and also the decision tree is implemented now on Internet of Things nodes. Uh, finally, the farmer may prefer to use color mounted accelerometer rather than noseband halter. In the future, we are planning to collect more data for the validation uh, on the same farm, but maybe on other farms to address other herds. And also we are planning to combine both accelerometer and, and, and localization data in order to classify more behaviors and also to, uh, to increase the accuracy of the system so we can build a monitoring and alert system which is normally the, the objective of the Monaco project that we are working on now. Uh, at the end, you are welcome to the annual meeting of the European Federation of Animal Science, which will be organized next year in Ghent, Belgium. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you for the presentation and for keeping the time. We have uh, time for one or two questions. Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Medesa, for this uh, very... Can you please introduce yourself? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm Professor Bartali al Hussein, Director of uh, Agricultural Engineering School at Hassan Second Institute of Agronomy and Veterinary Sciences 
и на работа на руку. Тъй като мисля, че не са това са very interesting presentation, believe that it has a potential to help farmers who are raising cows and worried about losing cows when they don't know when the cow will be like in the calving period. My question is about the size you have used, 10 cows. Uh, how did you come up with this number? Because it's a um, question of uh, uh, representativity, representativeness. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's a good question. Actually, in this moment, we are uh, collecting more data on the, on, on the farm now. So the objective is to collect more data to validate this first output. So uh, we are also collecting data not for six hours per cow, per cow but for five or, or maybe one week, for, uh, one week for each cow. So we have long-term data for, for both sensors. So the, the, the work is still going to, to, to validate the, the, the results. Yeah, one more question. This is John. John Schiller. University of Florida. You said the major problem was with other activities such as walking. Would it be possible to put an accelerometer on some other portion of the cow and allow you to filter that out? Indeed, yeah. Uh, we, we are using also, uh, we, we are we using two sensor, two accelerometer for each cow. One on the neck, so I presented here just the result from the neck accelerometer. But we are uh, attaching also another accelerometer on the uh, on the leg of the car, so we can also classify better walking, the number of steps, and other lying down, for example. And we have more more possibilities. Okay, thank you very much. I think we we have to stop now. For more questions, please do that uh, after the end of the session. Thank you very much.